I have brought one more numerical on Stokes theorem. This problem is in cylindrical coordinate system. And the problem is copied here. Look at the magnetic field vector H. It is having only five component. We have to verify the Stokes theorem for the portions of the cylindrical surface defined by these three variable. R is kept at two, phi varies and Z varies. Okay. So let us understand what is that portion of the cylinder defined by these variables. I have prepared a diagram for this one. Look at the variables. The first variable R is kept at two. So this represents a cylinder of radius two. Okay, so that is the cylinder I have constructed here. Its radius is two over here from here to here. So that is two. So on this cylinder, some portion is selected based on the angle variation from pi by four to pi by two. Phi is the angle measured from x-axis. On the x-axis, phi is always zero. X-axis is the reference axis for this angle of phi. And phi advances in the direction towards positive y-axis. So from positive x-axis to positive y-axis, it is 90 degree. It is 90 degree. So this plane, this yellow plane, is perpendicular is exactly on positive y axis is exactly so the angle between this x axis and this yellow plane is 90 degree and from the x axis this green plane is at an angle of pi by 4 so phi should be chosen from pi by 4 to pi by 2 that is from here to here the blue area or the surface is the surface between this green and yellow planes and also on the cylinder of r equal to two. So the blue area, blue surface area is on the cylinder as well as between the two planes. So that is the required plane. Next one is Z is also defined which gives the height of the surface that is defined between one and 1.5. So the lower surface of the cylinder held at one, upper at 1.5. So the blue area is restricted to J value, Z values from one to 1.5. So this is the required area for this particular problem. So let us prepare our own diagram for problem solving. Okay. So when you take Z yeah, this is representing Z value from one to 1.5. This line is parallel to Z axis, then angle. So the line representing the angle is a part of the cylinder. So this is the arc. Okay. That is enough here. This angular structure, so that is varies from pi by four to pi by eight. So this is the area defined by the variable z and phi. Then what about r? 
r is constant on this complete surface that is r equal to 2 then what is the direction of this surface the direction of any surface is perpendicular to its own plane so the direction of the surface is in r direction radial direction so this may be extending outward or inward so there are two possibilities here if you think this surface is, it may be this side or this side, both are perpendicular. So the direction of this surface depends on the direction of the path we choose here. For example, if the path is chosen this way, for analysis, then we can use our right hand rule to decide this one. So the right hand thumb rule can be considered here. So the direction is given according to this one. So look at this. Look at this plane. So this is the circular surface. This is the plane right and the arrow is chosen this side and this arrows on the path circular path are oriented in the folded fingers four fingers of the right hand and then the direction of the surface is decided by the thumb okay that means for this surface what i have chosen for this particular problem if it is to be decided, if it is oriented in this direction, then imagine your thumb in this direction. If thumb is oriented in this direction, folding of the fingers, right. So they're going to say that the path should be chosen in this direction. So the direction of the surface is very important these kind of problems right if you choose the path in opposite direction this way then the direction of the thumbs comes out like this like this so for this particular problem okay if i choose arrows in these direction that means think the four fingers of our right hand are oriented in this direction, then the thumb will be acting in this direction. So this is the direction of the surface A cap N. Now if we choose one small area for integration later, let us say ds, yes, ds, we have to write an equation for ds now itself. So what is ds? This is the cylindrical coordinate system, right? What is varying here? Phi is varying. So d phi, z is varying. So dz. And we know that in all differential surfaces of top surface, bottom surface, and cylindrical surface, this r will be there. We have analyzed. So the direction of this surface can be chosen either outward or inward. If it is outward, this is positive R. If it is inward, it is negative R. Since it is chosen here, it is positive R. So these arrows on the path will decide the direction of the surface. R, D phi, T z. And this arrow can be chosen in any direction accordingly. This should also be decided using right hand law. So that's why let us fix up this idea because nothing is mentioned in the problem about the direction of the surface or current. So because of that, we shall go by this finally. So let me start the solution.
the problem is here. Now let us consider the Stokes theorem now. Stokes theorem, line integral of h over a closed path is equal to surface integral of curl of h. Surface integral of curl of h. That's the Stokes theorem. Now we shall verify whether this problem satisfies Stokes theorem or not. So for that, uh, let me take up left hand side of the equation first. We shall evaluate h for the closed path. Right. So for that, we have to choose the closed path. Let us draw once again the closed path here. Yes, this is the closed path and we shall choose the direction of the path in this direction. Then using right hand thumb rule, the direction of the surface is acting outward, A cap Z. Right, next. Let us define the values. Okay, let us identify these paths by the name a, B, C, D, A, right. And here the height of the path is extending from Z equal to one to 1.5. And across it is pi by four to pi by two, the angle. Next. So point to be noted here is on the path A, B, z equal to constant that is one on the path cd that is z equal to 1.5 fixed on the path da phi is equal to pi by 4 constant on the path bc phi equal to pi by 2 constant and all of these that means on the complete surface R values two that is given the problem. R is not varying on the surface at all. So keeping this in mind, let us represent the closed surface integral of H as four different integrals that is from A to B h dot dl likewise b to c plus c to d plus d to a so all four integrals contains h dot dl right so now we'll go in detail about this okay fine now we have to define h dot dl now h is given in the problem itself that is 2 r squared z plus 1 sine phi a cap phi so first h value what is h value i think it is 2 r square z plus 1 sine phi that is 2 r square z plus 1 sine phi a k of phi. That is the h given in the problem dot dl. dl should be chosen from a to b. dl should be chosen from path a to b. So look at this path a to b that is this fellow. Choose a small length DL and this one. So on this path, what is varying? Phi is varying, right? So this is the arc 
part of a circle. So that's why DL is here R D5. And look at the arrow. The arrow is in the anti-clockwise direction. And we know that anti-clockwise direction is the positive a cap phi direction. So phi is defined with respect to x axis. Phi is defined with respect to x axis. If you come back to this drawing, phi is defined with respect to x axis. It is positive in anti clockwise direction, negative in clockwise direction. So the arrow and the path AB is in anti-clockwise direction. So that's why it is to be taken as A cap phi from part A to B, right? A to B. Next, similarly, the second integral, let us say, plus B to C, H remains same for the complete problem sine phi unit vector a cap phi dot b to c look at the b to c the path b to c is acting upward on this path z is varying from z equal to 1 to z equal to 1.5 the small path chosen here can be taken as dz and this is acting upward. So that is positive Z. Downward is negative Z. So that is why the path B to C can be chosen as DZ A cap Z. Next, we are going to C to D. Same H vector sine phi A K of dot. Go to DL. So DL for C to D is this one. This is also arc, a part of the cylindrical surface, circular in shape, if you complete. Any arc is RD5 in cylindrical coordinate system. And this is in clockwise direction. This arrow is in clockwise direction that should be taken as minus A cap phi. So for this path, it is R, D5 minus A cap minus is here. The last part. D to A to R square Z plus one sine phi A cap phi dot here, yeah. look at the last part that is parallel to z-axis. This one, same as earlier, this below. That is varying, so dz arrow is downward, that is negative z-axis, negative z-axis. So this is minus dz. A Z cap. So we have evaluated over all the four parts. Look at this H value, same everywhere. That is not a problem, only path changes. So if I proceed further in the next step, H dot DL plus path is equal to. The first integral a phi dot a phi is one. So they are the only two vectors here, remaining all are scalar numbers. So remaining things are multiplied. 
over that one. So 2R square into R is 2R cube, Z plus one, sine phi into D phi. That is our path number one. Next one, path B to C, A phi dot A is zero dot product of unit vectors. Next part, integral of C to D, C to D, A phi dot A phi is one, two R square, R square into R is R cube, Z plus one, sine phi. So there is a minus sign. I take out that minus sign and place it here. Fourth one is D to A, A phi dot A Z is zero, as I said, then as that one. So only two integrals are left to be evaluated, right. Is equal to. So these two are not there. These, these two integrals look alike. Only thing their paths are different, A, B, and the paths are different. Look at this integration. This with respect to phi. So we have to integrate sine phi. Remaining all values are constants on the path A to B. So what is constant here? Two. What about R? R is also constant. So what is R value here? Two for the complete surface given in the problem. So that's why two cube I'll take out. Z value on path AB is also constant too. So what is the Z value on the path AB? So look at on the path AB, Z value is one. On the path CD, Z value is 1.5. So one and 1.5, they remain constant on those paths, they do not vary. So that is why here, two R cube, Z value on this path A to B is one, integrate only sine phi. Limits for phi is pi by four to pi by two, always for this particular problem. Next is minus two constant here also. R cube means two cube. On the path C to D, Z value is 1.5. Again, integration is only here. Sine phi, d phi, lower limit, upper limit. So now here two cube is eight. Eight to the 16. 16 to the 32. Integration of sine phi is minus cos phi, pi by four to pi by two. Minus two, two cube, 1.5 plus one is 2.5. Multiplication gives us 40. This is also minus cos phi, pi by four to pi by two. Here, this minus is there. Minus you take out, apply the limit, cos 90 minus cos 45, that is pi by four. Here also take out minus and becomes plus cos 90 minus cos pi by four. So finally, what happens here? Minus 32, cos 90 is zero. Minus, this is one by root two. 
cos 45. This is plus and cos 90 is 0 minus 1 by root 2. Here, work out what is happening. Larger number positive plus 40. And this is minus 32. So this minus comes out here, minus 40. This minus into minus plus. So if you work out using calculator, we are going to get answer as minus 5.656 amps. That is the left hand side of the Stokes theorem. You got minus 5.65. Now let us find out the right hand side of the Stokes theorem. RHS. So it is surface integral of the curl H. So to find this surface integral, first you should know the del cross H. So separately consider the curl H first. And we know that uh, curl H can easily be evaluated using the determinant concept that is for cylindrical coordinate system, it is 1 by r, a cap r, r into a cap phi, and a cap z, the unit vectors of the system. Then partial derivatives with respect to all the three variables, r phi z. Lastly, the factor here is h, so it is h r first r into h phi, then h z. So this is the determinant that helps us to find curl h. Let us substitute the values for h components from the numerical problem. One by r. A cap r dou by dou r h r r component is not given in the problem so it is zero next is r a phi cap dou by dou phi r in the problem phi component is given that is 2 r square set plus 1 sin phi this is the phi component in the problem Next, the last column, dou by dou z, z component of the magnetic field is not given in the problem, zero. So let us solve this determinant, one by r, a cap r, a cap r means multiplication of these two terms, minus multiplication of these two terms. So it is zero minus partial differentiation with respect to Z of multiply throughout with R. It's two R cube Z plus one sine phi. So this is your R component. Next is for phi component, we have to multiply these two terms. So minus R A phi cap is, so both are zeros. Lastly, the Z component that is a cap z into here what is the multiplication for z component that is a cap z for this one multiply these two and these two so f 
fine. So a cap z is do by do r of two r cube z plus one sine phi minus the other term is zero. So this completes our curl edge. Let us simplify. Curl edge is equal to here. One by R, let me be there. Differentiation with respect to Z. Here minus is there, minus. Differentiate with respect to Z. 2R cube is constant with respect to Z. Differentiation of Z is 1. Differentiation of 1 is 0. So 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 into 2R cube is 2R cube into sine phi. And this whole term is multiplied by unit vector A cap R. Next, this is not there. We'll come back to this flow. That is differentiation is with respect to R. R cube differentiation is 3 R square. 3 into 2 is 6 R square. So plus 6 R square. Z is constant with respect to R. Sine phi is also constant. It's multiplication with Z component. A cap Z unit vector. Now it's time to multiply throughout by 1 by R. So minus 1 R cancels here. 2 R square sin phi. Similarly, plus here 1 R cancels 6 R z plus 1 sine phi is at cap. This gives us the curl edge final equation. Now we can evaluate the complete right hand, right hand side of the Stokes theorem easily. That is surface integral of curl edge dot ds. So surface integral of curl h is 2r square sine phi the r component plus 6r z plus 1 sine phi this is the z component dot ds. So ds should be chosen as per the left hand side discussion, yes. So here path is chosen so that the direction of the surface is outward, A cap Z, right? So we have to choose now the DS over here. So what are the DS? DS is Z is varying, phi is varying as we did already in the beginning stage itself. Here ds is r d phi dz a cap r for outward r. If you take the arrow in the opposite directions, this is going to be minus a cap r. So finally, for this particular problem, it is r d phi dz a gap up. Right. Now, the surface integral. First, we shall perform the dot product. AR is there with the first component. AR dot AR is 1. So, minus 2R square sine phi to be multiplied with this term. That is R d phi. This, these scalar terms are multiplied. Unit vectors are dotted. Next, for the second term, 
this is that az dot ar is zero. So that's why second term does not exist here. So keep the constant terms outside. If any, which are the constant terms here. Two is constant, R is also constant because the variables are phi and Z. R square into R, R cube. R cube. So integration is only with the sine phi. D phi and DZ. So, but in this part, R value is two given in the problem that is constant. So two R cube. Now, go for the first integral with respect to phi. Integrate sine phi with respect to phi. Limits for phi is phi by four to phi by two. Integrate z from one to 1.5. Okay. Here is k is to be taken, minus sign is there, so that minus sign to be taken without fail. So here is two cube is eight. So into two is minus 16. Integration of sine phi is cos phi, phi by two, phi by four. Integration of tail side. This into steps now. Minus can be taken out to make it plus, then cos 90 minus cos pi by 4. Here it is 1.5 minus 1. Fifteen. Cos 90 is 0. This is 1 by root 2. And this is 1.5 minus 1 is 0.5. So minus is there, the final answer is negative. It should be 5.656. Cross check with your calculator. And so we got the same value on the left hand side and right hand side from the left hand side and right hand side of the Stokes theorem that is minus 5.656 amps. So the given vector satisfies the Stokes theorem. That's it. Thank you.